sterilization it comes under microbiology video series under unit 3 so before moving on to sterilization methods we will have a look on brief history of sterilization technique this was started at the time when Anton von Leeuwenhoek identified or visualized microorganisms so when we start visualizing microorganisms then we start thinking of killing the microorganism Louis, pa Louis Pasteur in 1822 to 1895 he is the person who lived and identified pasteurization technique it is a method of killing microbes in the milk John Tyndall he identified a method called Tyndallization which is a sequencing of sterilization technique we will be discussing later. Robert Koch he identified the technique of isolating microorganisms and Joseph Lister he is the father of antiseptic who identified aseptic techniques like with the help of carbolic acid. Some of the definitions which you will be seeing in this slides frequently. Sterilization, it means to free an object or substance from all life of any kind. So it means it is killing microorganism including spores. Disinfection, it means the killing or removal of microorganism capable of causing infection. And disinfectants, agent that cause destruction or inhibition of the growth of microorganism on non-living surfaces like instruments, floors and antiseptics, agents that cause destruction or inhibition of growth of microorganism on a living surface like skin and mucous membrane. So if you are going to inhibit the growth or destruction of the growth of microorganism on a living surface, we call it as antiseptics and if you are going to remove the microorganism on a non-living surface we call it a disinfectant how you can select the sterilization process so these are all the common things you should remember when you think of sterilizing any equipments volume of product to be processed so how much items you have to be sterilized capital cost of equipment you should think of the equipment cost and your budget operating cost so not only the equipment there are some equipments which may cost you some cost you some operating cost facility cost and requirements operational safety toxicity environmental concerns so you should think of the safety of your employee toxicity is there any toxic effects of this equipment on environmental concerns processing time ease of validation ease of operation and calibration so these are all the things you should remember when you select a sterilization process okay the main and for most important is you should think of the cost and you should think of the environment and the safety of the employee what is the time it is going to take volume of the volume of the items your equipments you have for sterilization Types of sterilization or methods of sterilization. There are different methods of sterilization. Very broadly classified as physical method and chemical method. Chemical method we have already discussed all the disinfectants in the previous video. For your reference I will put the link in the description box. Physical methods. So in this slides we will be focusing on physical methods of sterilization. The sunlight, drying, heat, filtration, radiation, ultrasonic and sonic vibration. So these are all the physical methods used for sterilization. So what is sunlight? So you are all aware that it is an old and uh, effective method where the sunlight or direct exposure of the sunlight will kill microbes. Action primarily it is due to UV rays. However, effects vary due to the places. It depends upon the climatic changes and the region where you live. The amount of UV rays, effectiveness of the rays is, depends on. So in tropical countries, germicidal effect is better than four seasoned countries. So if it is a tropical country, the sunlight is the best method of killing germs. 
bacteria in water are readily destroyed by the sunlight so the next two method is drying moisture is essential for growth of bacteria so in the when we discuss about characteristics of bacteria we have discussed that in moisture the bacteria grows well so if you put anything under the sun or if you put anything for drying then automatically the growth of bacteria is decrease drying in air has deleterious effect on many bacteria but the spores are unaffected so it is not a reliable one because the spores will not be killed by a normal drying method the next is heat you all aware that heat is the most reliable method of sterilization if we see the mode of action the effect is due to protein maturation destruction of the protein maturation oxidative damage and the spores are killed by causing hydrolysis for example even you make the spores hydrolysis what happens they break the protein material uh, in the bacterial wall so that the spores are killed factors influencing sterilization by heat nature of the heat what are all the factors which affects the sterilization process it depends upon what kind of heat you are using whether it is dry or moist how much temperature and how long you are keeping so the temperature and time number of microorganisms how much it is contaminated that is number of microorganisms characteristics of the organism whether it is um, killed by the temperature or not it depends upon that characteristics of the microorganisms the effect will be there type of material used for sterilization so these are all the factors which influence the sterilization by heat like nature of heat temperature and time number of microorganisms characteristics of the microorganisms and type of material you use there is a term called thermal death time so this should this you should remember when we use heat as a sterilizing method it is a minimum time required to kill a suspension of organism at a predetermined temperature in a specified environment so this is called thermal death time so sometimes they may ask in the short note or in the definitions it is the minimum time required to kill a suspension of organism at a predetermined temperature in a specified environment so it means minimum time is required to kill certain amount of organisms in certain amount of temperature we have discussed what is heat what are all the factors affects the heat and how the mechanism of action happens when you expose the microorganism to heat okay now we'll see the types of heat method the heat method there are of two types that is dry heat and moist heat we will discuss what are all the things comes under dry heat flaming incineration hot air oven so you all know what is flaming flaming means putting directly under the flame so what we do generally if you want to kill a very little amount of bacteria so if you want to sterilize the inoculation loop so what you can do is you can take the infected material in the inoculation loop and just held it on top of the bunsen flame till they become red hot so it is a very simple method of sterilizing a very small things or if you directly want to uh, sterilize the microorganism you can do this so what you can do you take the inoculation loop take the infective material and held it in a bunsen flame but this infected material it should not splatter so to avoid splatter you can dip it in disinfectant before flaming to prevent splattering so in dry heat the first method is flaming so what you should do is you take the infected material in an inoculation loop dip it in the disinfectant solution and hold it on top of the bunsen flame till it becomes red hot so the bacteria is killed and it will become sterile so to just to prevent splattering you are dipping the infected material into the inoculation loop uh, sorry in disinfectant 
The next method in dry heat is incineration. So you all are aware that what is incineration? Just burning in a closed um, vessel. So it's a safe method of destruction of materials such as contaminated cloth, animal carcasses, pathological materials. But we can um, incinerate plastics or PVCs but it will cause uh, black smoke which is not good for environment. So just try to avoid all these plastic and PVC materials to incinerate. So even nowadays we can see that in small houses or in small uh, laboratories you can see this incinerator on the working area. The next dry heat method is hot air oven. So hot air oven is very commonly used dry heat method. What they do here is the oven is heated by electricity with heating elements in the wall of the chamber. It is like microwave hot air oven will have um, heating elements on the wall and this is heated by an electricity. So the chamber is fitted inside with a fan for even distribution of hot air. So when this heating element produces air what happens that is circulated inside by a small fan. The holding period of 160 degrees Celsius is used for one hour to sterilize the articles here. So what you can do you can put all those instruments uh, inside the hot air oven and you will start the electricity and this electricity will emit heat and it is circulated inside the chamber by the help of the fan. Points to remember when you use a hot air oven. The hot air is a bad conductor of heat so it will not kill completely all the microorganisms penetrating power is low so as it is a dry heat the penetrating power of this hot air oven is very low the oven should not be overloaded so you should remember when you use a hot air oven you should not dump everything inside the oven it should be not overloaded the object should be arranged so that there is enough movement of air so it should not, one article should not touch the other article so that the air will be circulated everywhere around the instruments. Glassware should be dry before placed inside the oven. So when you are going to keep any glass materials, you should wipe it off. Then you have to keep inside the oven. Test tubes and flash should be wrapped in a paper. Rubber material except silicon should not withstand the heat so should not be used to sterilize rubber materials. The hot air oven should not be used for sterilizing rubber materials. So what are all the things comes under dry heat is flaming, incineration and hot air oven. The next one is moist heat. So moist heat, the first important one is boiling method. Boiling is not recommended for sterilizing surgical instruments. Why? Because it will, it will destroy the shar sharpness of the surgical instruments and the boiling will not kill the spores. So usually boiling, normal boiling method is not good for sterilizing surgical instruments. Prolonged boiling kills vegetative bacteria but not spores. It means it is a mean of disinfection not the sterilization. So boiling you can use it for disinfecting the microorganism but for killing pores that is the sterilization we, we are not supposed to use it. Hard water should not be used as it may spoil the instruments. So when you use boiling method you should not use hot water. The temperature has to be set like 90 to 100 degrees Celsius and the time should be kept for minimum of 10 minutes and maximum of 30 minutes. While this process is on, the lid of the sterilizer should not be opened. So once you open, the temperature reduces so the effectiveness of the method of sterilizing instrument or article decreases. So 
Boiling is actually not recommended for sterilizing surgical instruments as it is not killing the entire microorganism, the spores are left out. Okay, it is a mean of disinfection. The next in the moist heat we will discuss about pasteurization. I know that you all are aware of this pasteurization when you studied about Louis, pa Louis Pasteur. So the temperature here we keep it below 100 degree Celsius. So, we are not boiling above 100 degree, we are keeping it below 100 degree Celsius. It aims to reduce the number of viable pathogens in liquids so they are unlikely to cause disease. So, what is the main help here? We are destructing microbes in the liquids. So, what happens? It usually, the temperature is kept for few seconds or a fraction of second above 100 degree Celsius and immediately you are bringing it to the below 100 degree celsius so here 71 degree celsius is kept for 15 to 20 minutes and 62 degree celsius is kept for 30 minutes so what is pasteurization here if we see it is actually what we do we are uh, heating it and then cooling it down okay it is called a flash method because your the heating process above 100 happens for fraction of second and then you are maintaining the temperature below 100 degrees Celsius that is 62 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes or 71 degrees Celsius for 15 to 20 seconds. Okay, this is called pasteurization. Mostly we use liquid for this method. The next in moist heat we need to discuss about is tindalization. So this we have seen already John Tyndall he has done this in his uh, time what is that's why the name is kept as tindalization. What happens here in this process we boil for a period of 20 minutes at atmospheric pressure again you will cool incubate for one day and then again you will boil it and this process is done for three consecutive days. So what we do is we boil for 20 minutes and then bring down the temperature, cool and incubate for one day and then again you will boil. So like this you will do for three consecutive time and then finally you will boil and stop the process. So what is the principle behind the stindalization is first exposure kills all vegetative bacteria. The first boiling during that time all the vegetative bacteria kills during this incubation period the temperature is very very effective for the spores to germinate. So all the dead spores, bacterial spores will start to germinate and start to develop as a microorganism. So during the next phase what happens? Boiling will kill the spores. So this is the best method for killing the spores. But there are few organisms like thermophiles or anaerobes will be surviving in this process. So tindalization is a consecutively you will do boiling and incubation, boiling and incubation. Boiling will destruct the organism and incubation will make an environment for the spore to develop as an organism and in the subsequent episode what happens the spores will be killed this autoclave comes under the boiling that is steam under pressure this is a bit, little bit bigger topic so i want to discuss in a separate video link i have put it in the description box filtration so we have seen heat and here the next one is filtration it is a method of filtering some microorganisms like bacteria and virus from the liquids so which liquid we use like sera and antibiotics using a membrane filter made of cellulose acetate filtration what we do we filter all the microorganisms with the help of the filter made of cellulose acetate from the liquids like sera vaccines and antibiotics so there are different types of filters. First one is candle filters that is manufactured in different grades of porosity. So the candles filters are 
under different grades of porosity which is commonly used in the aqua filters in the drinking water all the aqua filters are made of candle filters the next one is asbestos filters it is a disposable single use disc used in the industrial purpose the next one is sintered glass filters so this is prepared by heat fused powdered glass particles so the heat is fused into the glass particles and made it as a filters but what is the problem here it is brittle and expensive the next is membrane filters which are very commonly used in the medical field that is made of cellulose esters and polymers which we filter the microorganisms so this is filtration process and it has different types of filters the next is radiation we all know what is radiation the types of radiation non ionizing and ionizing radiations are there non ionizing radiations the wavelength longer than the visible light and the examples of non ionizing radiations are infrared and ultraviolet rays ionizing radiations comes through x ray gamma rays and cosmic rays but what are all the problems with the ionizing radiation is it is highly lethal and may penetrate human tissues also and it causes genetic mutations so you have to be very careful when you use ionizing radiation and the uses of this radiation method is mostly industrial purpose but in some categories we may use it in operation theaters and tuberculosis laboratories to kill the mycobacterium tuberculosis so radiation is not very commonly used in medical but we use it like in cases of tb tb laboratories and operation theaters mostly used in industrial purpose so we have discussed different types of sterilization methods how to select sterilization process and except autoclave we have discussed all the physical methods chemical methods are explained in disinfection and disinfectant video and in the physical method we have discussed about sunlight drying heat in heat we discussed dry and moist heat and um, filtration and radiation autoclave that is steam under pressure as will will be discussed in a separate video thank you